Hallelujah. We give God the praise on tonight. I want to say welcome to each and every one of you that is on the prayer line. Uh, those of you that are on Facebook Live and Periscope tonight, God bless you as well. And welcome to our ministry prayer line call tonight. Um, those of you that are on the prayer line tonight, all of our callers tonight, I ask that you would just take the moment to share. Um, if you will, invite somebody through a text message. Um, let them know that we're on right now. Blessings to you all. If you see me looking here, I'm looking at Periscope. If you see me looking here, I'm looking at Facebook. And to God be all of the glory. Hallelujah. Those of you on Facebook tonight, take a moment to share, if you will. Um, share with your followers. Blessings to you all tonight. God bless you. Thank you all for hitting those hearts. Amen. Y'all came on ready. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless Jesus tonight. Um, I am Pastor Prophetess Carmen Haywood. And I just take this time to greet you all, to just, you know, invite you all to our, our ministry, our Facebook Live tonight. Glory to God. Blessings to you all. God bless you, Evangelist Rochelle. Those of you that are coming on, blessings to you, Sister Sequita. God bless you tonight. Blessings to you, uh, Minister Jasper, tonight. Blessings, man of God. Amen. Blessings to Sister Christina. <coughs> Excuse me. Sister Christina, God bless you tonight. Sister Shana. Sister April, um, Sister Diane, those are the names that I can see. Um, blessings to you, um, Prophet Anthony. God bless you tonight. Amen. Blessings to you, Sister Pamela. Those of you that are chiming in, God bless you all. Listen, just a, a very um, encouraging word from the Lord. Blessings to you, Sister Lisa, tonight. Um, I want to say this word tonight is just going to encourage you, you know, to keep on going in God. Amen. Keep on going in the things of God. Many of you are getting ready to embark upon something major. Many of you are getting ready to embark upon a major breakthrough. Some of you even a turnaround. Glory to God. And I hear the spirit of the Lord saying to encourage you to stay to the end. Listen, sometimes we jump on Facebook Live and then we'll, you know, you know, we'll stay on for a little while and then we'll jump back off again. The Lord says, stay here. He wants you to receive this word. Glory to God in your spirit on tonight. Hallelujah. So get in a quiet place. You know, not too many distractions. Glory to God. Turn off the television. Hallelujah. Get in a quiet place so that you can hear. Blessings to you all tonight. God bless you, um, Pastor Hubbard, tonight. Hallelujah. Um, those of you that have any questions, please, please hold your questions. If it's not pertaining to what I'm saying, listen, hold your questions. You can also inbox me. Feel free to inbox me or send an email. If it's pertaining to our ministry, please send all questions to our email. All right. The ministry email is um, pipm1000 at gmail.com. All right, send all prayer requests there. Um, tonight, if I'm led of the Lord, I will pray at the very end. But I want you to hear this word on tonight. I want you to hear it in your hearing. For the Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. Glory to God. And so God wants you to hear his word tonight. You know, sometimes we don't we don't need a whole lot of other things. You know, we just need the word. Amen. Somebody show. I need the word tonight. I need the word. Blessings to you, um, prophetess Andrea. Glory to God. I just need the word. I need the word. The word is what's going to keep you. The word of God is what's going to sustain you. Hallelujah. The word of God is going to shift your life on tonight. Hallelujah. Somebody shout. I'm ready for the word. I'm ready. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. Glory to God. We're going to open up with the word of prayer. Amen. Those of you, once again, that's right. That's right. She says, I need a word tonight. Hallelujah. On Periscope. Listen, Periscope, share with your followers. Thank you for the hearts. Amen. Y'all came in strong with the hearts tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I just pray that the presence of the Lord, amen, is here. And not only that, that God will meet you at your point of need. Hallelujah. That is my prayer tonight. We're getting ready to pray and seek the face of God. Hallelujah. That's why I show I need a word. I need a word, God. I need your word. Hallelujah. Because your word is going to keep me. Your word is going to shift my life. Hallelujah. Glory. Higher did your shot. Oh, I feel the power of God already, y'all. Listen, I need you all to share. All right, share and invite someone to join on tonight. If you see me looking here, I'm looking at Periscope. If you see me looking here, I'm looking at Facebook. Amen. And we're on our prayer line. It looks like we have 17 callers on the line tonight. To God be the glory. Amen. Um, share and invite. All right, tag somebody's name in. Hallelujah. Tag someone in the video tonight. Tag somebody in this broadcast tonight. Some of you may have seen the caption. Amen. The caption... Um, what God had given me, amen, is keep on pressing. Hallelujah. Keep on pressing. Keep on going in the things of God. Keep on moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will make it. Glory to God. Keep on pressing. 
Hallelujah. Keep on going. You will make it. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody just give God some praise. Hallelujah. Somebody just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody just give God some glory. Hallelujah. Somebody just clap your hands and begin to worship God. Begin to praise God in this atmosphere. Hallelujah. We believe in God. Hallelujah. To move mightily by his spirit on tonight and set somebody free. Glory to God. You know, Jesus said that he came. Hallelujah. He came to set the captive free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus came for one purpose. Hallelujah. And that was to do the will of his father. Glory to God who sent him. Hallelujah. And how many of you know I'm on assignment on tonight? Glory to God to release this word into your spirit. Hallelujah. And as I release this word and you receive this word, hallelujah, you're going to shift. Glory to God. Some of you going to come out of something. Hallelujah. Into your new. Oh, I can't get no help to tonight. Some of you, glory to God, I hear you, Lord. Yes, God. He says, some of you that received this word tonight, you, the door is going to be closed to the thing that you've been praying about, and then God's going to open the door for you. There's going to be new opportunities for many of you. Hallelujah. So receive the word of the Lord tonight. Get in a posture of worship. Get in a posture of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you may not have praised God in a long time. And that's probably because you have not, excuse me, you have not been in the house of the Lord. Glory to God. But for those of you, amen, that have not been to your local church, you have not fellowship with the saints. Listen, you can lift your hands right in your living room. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can sing a song. Hallelujah. A new song to the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. God can birth something new inside of you. I did your shot. I said the Lord can birth something new inside of you on tonight. If you just let him in, glory to God. You just got to let the spirit of the Lord have his way on tonight. Father, in Jesus name, with hands lifted in the air, we say thank you. Father, we thank you, yes, God, just for who you are. We thank you, Father, that you are sovereign, you are mighty, you are holy, you are righteous, oh God. And besides you, there is none other, Father God. We thank you on tonight, Father. We take this time to enter in to your courts with praise. We take this time to enter into your courts with thanksgiving, oh God. We thank you right now, Father, just for a new, higher did your shop, just for a new fresh word, God, that you're getting ready to release. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We repent of our sins, Father. We take this time to repent right now in your presence. We take this time, Lord God, to say that we are sorry. Father, forgive us for all sin in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask tonight that you will wash us clean, oh God. That you will purify us once again, God. Purify our hearts. Purify our spirits, God. Purify our minds on tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you even now for the moving of your spirit, oh God. Oh God, Holy Spirit, have your way tonight. Begin to move in this atmosphere like never before. Lord, we thank you even now for strengthening those who need strength tonight. Those who need another touch tonight, oh God. I pray that you would touch them, Father, from the crown of their heads to the very sole of their feet. Lord, I thank you that your anointing, oh God, is going to go forth in the name of Jesus and destroy every yoke of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you even now that your word is going to go forth, Father. Hallelujah. It's going to accomplish what it is sent out to do. Father, we thank you even now for the mighty moving of your spirit in the name of Jesus. And those who come ready, Father, will receive from you on tonight. Those who come ready, yes, God, in the name of Jesus, those who come ready, hallelujah, will receive your word on tonight. We thank you when we praise you now. We bind the hand of the enemy right now. Father, we thank you that Satan is bound on every side and every hand. Father, we thank you even now for loosing your fire. Hey, hey, higher did your shot. Hallelujah. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Loose it now, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, that everything that's not like you will be consumed. That everything that's not like you, Father, will have to go. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you when we praise you now. We glorify you, Lord. And we say thank you for having your way in this atmosphere. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to say to each and every one of you once again, welcome to Prophetic Impact Prayer and Word Ministry. <coughs> excuse me. You all have to excuse me. Glory to God. Amen. The weather is changing here um, in North Carolina. And as the weather is changing, I'm trying to adjust. Amen. So y'all pray for me. Glory to God. Pray for me. Hallelujah. I'm used to the north. I'm used to when it's cold and stay cold. You know, I'm not used to, you know, 
I'm just going to leave it right there. <laughs> Glory to God. We had three different um, types of weather today. Um, I tell you, when we left out the house this morning, my son had to go take his state exam. Um, we left out the house about 645 and it was like frost on the steps. It was frost like everywhere. It looked like it had snowed a little bit and the temperature had dropped. I believe the temperature was somewhere around in the 30s. Glory to God. And then around about maybe 12 noon, <laughs> the, the weather got hot. You know, it went up to maybe about 48. It was almost 50 degrees. You know, I was like, okay, all right, I got to get used to this. Hallelujah. And I think even now it's still kind of warm. Glory to God. Amen. And the temperature probably is going to drop in the middle of the night. But amen. My body is adjusting. So y'all pray for me. Glory to God. Pray for me in Jesus name. Hallelujah. I thank God for this word tonight because this word is going to encourage those who need encouragement. You know, in this walk and in this life is is not easy. It, it, first of all, it's not easy even being a child of God. I'm going to be honest tonight. I'm not going to give you no fairy tale. I'm, I Listen, I, there ain't no bed of roses that you're going to be picking when you get saved. When you get saved, listen, and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the fight is on. Say, now, we're going to pause right there. When you say yes to God, the fight is on. This is why God has given us many scriptures about fighting. See, some people say, no, Jesus paid the price. I ain't got to do nothing. You know, I could just sit here and just be saved. The devil is a liar. You have to fight. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Come on. So God says even now that he wants you to walk by faith and not by sight. He wants you to exemplify your faith. When tests and trials come, God wants you to use your faith. Come on. Your faith is 100% trust in God, <clears throat> somebody shout, Lord, I trust you. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, Lord, I trust you. Glory to God. Somebody shout, Lord, I trust you. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to be increased in their faith tonight. Thank you, Jesus. And so God says on tonight, encourage. He told me as I was in prayer, he said, encourage my people to keep on going. Hallelujah. It, it sounds so, hmm. It, you know, you know, when God says, keep on pressing, it sounds like a word, you know, that, that you've either heard before or, you know, even God may have been encouraging you to keep on going, right? Well, I want to encourage you with this word tonight, and I want to just bring some confirmation to those of you that are in the waiting room. For those of you that are waiting for God to do something, I want to encourage you tonight to keep on pressing. <clears throat> I, want you to, I, want to, I want you to keep on pressing tonight. The Spirit of the Lord wants you to continue to keep moving. Because the moment you get stuck, you, you now become a target. Blessings to you, woman of God. Sister Charlene, God bless you. The moment you stay still, you become a target. A target for who? A target for the enemy. The enemy can only hit a move. He can only hit a target that is staying still. He cannot hit a moving target. Come on. If you are staying still, then he knows where you are. He knows what you're saying. He knows what you're doing. Glory to God. And especially if you're running your mouth. <laughs> Come on here. Because some of you are not praying. Some of you are talking. You're not praying enough. You're doing too much talking. And the enemy can only know what comes out of your mouth. He's not all knowing. All right. I want you to remember that tonight. The enemy that is coming against you, the one who is designed to sift you as wheat, Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him. He exists and he is real. He has one assignment and that is to kill, steal and to destroy you. But Jesus has come that you might have life and have it what that more abundantly. So because Jesus has come, somebody catch this word real quick. So because Jesus has come that you might have life, you have to first accept Jesus into your life. Come on. So the first thing is to accept him. The first thing is to, uh, you know, to profess out of your mouth that he is your Lord and that he is your savior. Now, after that, that's when the rubber meets the road. <laughs> come on here. The confession is easy. Right, Sister Lisa? It's easy to confess. 
after the confession, you like, oh, I'm saved now. Thank you, Jesus. You might even get a little dance going on, you know. Got a little clapping in your hands, you know. you like, yes, I'm saved. Thank you, Lord. Now the devil say, really? Oh. So now you're going to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you think I'm not going to turn up the heat? You think I'm not going to throw you into the fiery furnace? Woo, somebody's in the fire tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just like the Hebrew, he, the three Hebrew boys. Glory to God. They were thrown in the fiery furnace because they refused to bow down to the wicked king. Listen, the moment you say yes to God, the moment you surrender to God, let me tell you something. The heat is going to be turned up. Hey, hey, how are you, did he shot? The heat is going to be turned up and you're going to have to make a decision in the fire. Who am I talking to tonight? Glory to God. You're going to have to make a decision if you're going to bow down to the devil, if you're going to bow down to the wicked king. You're going to have to make a decision. Hiya, did he shot. Oh, God. Mm, something just flashed before me. Hallelujah. God just gave me. Hiya, shatanda maha. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I just saw in the spirit, God showed me two kingdoms. The devil's kingdom and his kingdom, God's kingdom. <laughs> it just flashed before me, y'all. Mm. And God is saying, whose kingdom are you going to choose tonight? He's saying, whose kingdom are you going to choose? Are you going to choose the devil or are you going to choose God? Somebody shout, I'm going to choose God. Come on. Hallelujah. Because guess what? You can walk into the devil's camp. You can allow the enemy to lead you to his kingdom. And I promise you, he's going to make it look glamorous. I promise you, he's going to make it look real good. Right? That's just like when the devil tempted Jesus. I believe it's John chapter four. Hallelujah. And he tempted Jesus and he, the Bible says he took him up to a high mountain. Come on here. He, he took Jesus all the way up, but Jesus had just come off of a fast though. So the Bible says that he was hungry. Come on here. And he probably was tired. Come on. Which means his physical body. Who am I talking to tonight? Hallelujah. Didn't have much strength. Ah, we going somewhere tonight. Hey, hey. How you did your shot? I said, we're going somewhere tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory. Hey, hey. Higher did your shot. God says he's getting ready to pull somebody out of a pit tonight. My God, my God. Somebody need to praise him right there. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessings to you all that are joining. Take the time to share if you will. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so the Bible says, Glory to God that Jesus was taken up to a high mountain. The devil took him up, right? We're not going to turn there for the sake of time because I have some word I got to give you all. Glory to God. But the Bible says that the devil took Jesus up. And then after he took him up one level, he took him up again. And that's when Jesus looked at the devil and said, wait a minute. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Satan, get thee behind me. Wait a minute, what are you trying to do? Oh, you think, and that's when the devil said, I'll give you all it is. You know, you, you can have everything. Come on. Like Jesus didn't already have, have it all. Somebody catch this revelation. Hi, did your shot. Oh, I just felt another release right there. Somebody catch this revelation tonight. Somebody catch it real quick. Somebody need to catch this real quick. You, you got to make a decision who you're going to serve. You got to make a decision who you're going to serve. You got to make a decision whose kingdom you're going to reside in. Ooh. Mm. My God, my God. Mm. Somebody show, I choose the Lord's kingdom. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Somebody show, I choose God's kingdom. I'm going to reside in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us turn, amen, to Matthew chapter 4. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 4. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read this for somebody and in your hearing. 
God's going to increase your faith. Amen. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right. So what does the Bible say? Let's turn to uh, Matthew chapter four. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter four, verse one. Yes, Lord. I hear you. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Glory to God. The Bible says, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, mm -hmm, he was afterward hungry. Let me just stop right here for one second. Many of you are fasting and praying because at the beginning of the year, many of you have ministries that you are part of and your leaders want you to fast. All right. You may not be a part of my ministry. You may not be a member covenant partner. You may not even be connected, but some of you, God showed me, he said, those that are going to join are on a fast. So there are some of you that are on a fast, you're on a consecration. All right. So here in this ministry, we're on our water consecration. We started January the 5th, drinking one gallon of water a day. All right. With our meals, glory to God, one gallon of water a day with our meals. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's going to stop on the 15th. So 10 days, we, we are, we, we're, we're drinking water 10 days. So that is our water consecration. Some of you are on a different type of fast. All right. But God did reveal to real that reveal that to me as I was in prayer. Okay. So God is taking me here to the scripture because many of you need encouragement on your fast. The woman of God says I'm fasting right now. See, there it is. Sister Morgan. And I don't even know her. She's probably new to the broadcast. Glory to God. But we welcome you, woman of God. Thank you for joining tonight. Let's read verse 2 again. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came, look at what happens to him. He said, if thou be the son of God, I'm sorry, if thou be the son of God, yes, command these stones to be made bread. Mm. He answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Verse five, then the devil taking him up to a holy city and setting him on a pinnacle of the temple <clears throat> and saith unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast yourself down for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands, they shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So the devil had the nerve to quote the word back to Jesus like he didn't already know. That's just like some of you, <laughs> the enemy trying to tell you some things through the word of God, but they don't have what it takes to live right. Uh-oh, we're going to leave that alone. Verse 7, somebody caught that though. Then Jesus said unto him, it is written again that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil took him up to an exceeding high mountain. So now the devil is taking Jesus up even further. But watch this. Somebody shout, Jesus already knew what was going to happen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He took him up to an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Now that's the lowercase g. All right. So the enemy was trying to tempt Jesus. Right? The enemy was trying to, that's right, he's a copycat. He was trying to tempt Jesus. And the Bible says that he wanted to show him the kingdoms of the world. Right? Hallelujah. And the glory of them. And that's a lowercase g, glory. So that's imitation. Come on. Verse 9. And said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou would just fall down and worship me. Come on, verse 10. Then he said, then said Jesus unto him, he said, get thee hence, Satan. In other words, get behind me, right? For it is written that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Verse 11, the devil leadeth him up, leadeth him and the angels, and behold, the angels came to minister to him, right? So as we can see here, blessings to you, amen, um, Prophet Antonio. God bless you, man of God. Thank you for joining the broadcast tonight. As we can see here, the devil was up to no good. He thought he was going to tempt Jesus. He thought it was going to work. But Jesus said, what did he say in verse 10? 
He said, for it is written that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and, and him only. So in other words, it's not going to work, Satan. What you're trying to do is not going to work. Who am I talking to tonight? And if you go up to verse 7, he says, it is written that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It's a dangerous thing to tempt God's servant. Come on. It's a dangerous thing when an enemy comes up against one of God's chosen. It's a dangerous thing because the moment you get the revelation, not only has God gone before you, but the moment you get the re revelation that you have power, hallelujah, over the evil one. You know, Jesus said in Luke 10 and 19, he said, behold, I've given unto you power. He said, power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. So the moment you realize that you have power, mm, glory to God, the moment that you realize that you have dunamis power, you have a power, glory to God, that only can come from heaven. Hallelujah. You have the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said, you have the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The power of God to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus says, I'm giving, I've given you power to tread. And that word tread means to step upon. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The word tread means to crush. So Jesus is saying, I've given you power to crush the devil. Mm. He's saying, I've given you power, hallelujah, to crush the enemy. Ah, this is good tonight. Hallelujah. And so Jesus says here to the devil, he says, listen, it's written. Don't tempt me. Hey, hey. Woo, how you did your shot? Listen, Jesus said, devil is written. Don't, don't you tempt me. Don't tempt the Lord. That Don't do that. <clears throat> Glory to God. Don't, don't tempt me. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, 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 and as Jesus was, you know, just, just telling the devil, it's not going to work. And I'm paraphrasing. He said, listen, it's not going to work. The devil tried to take him up to a higher mountain. Really? Thinking that, the, thinking that Jesus was going to be deceived. Jesus is God in the flesh. Come on here. So Jesus already knew. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the purpose of this, amen, and this scripture is to let you know that you have the same power. Mm. Glory to God. Somebody shout, I have the same power. Hallelujah. Because I've welcomed Jesus into my life. I've, I've invited him in and he is my Lord. Hallelujah. He's my everything. Hallelujah. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So in other words, he's my Lord. He's my master. Hey, hey. Higher than the Osha. He is Anani. Woo. Yes, God. Hallelujah. He is Lord God Almighty. He is El Shaddai. Hallelujah. He is God. Hallelujah. All by himself. He's, he's the God of more than enough. Hallelujah. And so because you have welcomed Jesus in, my Lord, hallelujah, because he's your all in all, because he's your everything. Hallelujah. Now you have power over the devil. Woo. Hallelujah. See, those who have never confessed Jesus Christ, they don't have the power that you have. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Those who have never accepted Jesus Christ, they don't have the power. That's why they continue to fall. They continue to sin. They are what the Bible calls sinners. All right. Glory to God. And the Bible also says that we are all sinners saved by grace. Come on here. Hallelujah. So it's because of the grace of God that we are what? Saved. Ah, this is good tonight. Hallelujah. Somebody pray for my voice. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. I just need three intercessors to go in right here. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to get this word out of my belly. Hey, hey. Hi, the old shot. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's going to leave here encouraged tonight. Thank you, Father. Yes, God. We glorify you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So God says, even in this, hallelujah, even in this of the reminder, glory to God, that as Jesus had told the devil, don't tip me. Glory to God. Don't tip me. Hallelujah. I just want to serve a notice on Periscope. This is a ministry. If it's not for you, you can exit. 
but I will block you. I got, I got to warn you though. I have to let you know I will block you because this is a ministry. So just be careful what you say. All right. But I, you can stay with us as long as you want to. All right. God bless you, Periscope. Amen. I got to serve notice, you know, because sometimes, them, you know, them spirits come at you and you got to let them know. Listen, you got to let them know it's a ministry. I'm not playing with God and God ain't playing with you either. <laughs> come on here. But it's all right, because you know what? Everybody needs God. Amen. Everybody needs God. Hallelujah. But sometimes, amen, you have to serve notice. You can't be afraid of the enemy. Come on here. You, you can't be afraid of a spirit that's coming against you when you're doing the will of God. You got to address it. How are you going to cast it out? <laughs> How are you going to cast out a demonic spirit and you don't even know what spirit? Hey, hey. How are you did your shot? You don't even know what spirit it is. That's all right. They got blocked. I, I tried to give I tried to give them warning. But you know what, though? There are a lot of atheists on social media. Everybody doesn't believe in the God that you serve. Everybody does not serve the same God that you serve. Some of them serve a lowercase g God. Some of them serve pagan gods. Some of them, so y'all don't want to talk tonight. Hallelujah. Some of them, their father is the devil. I'm just saying. Satan is a father. Did y'all know that? And he has children. <laughs> y'all know I'm telling the truth. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Listen, thank you all for praying tonight. Hallelujah. You have to serve the devil. Notice right on spot. Just like Jesus. We read it right here. Matthew chapter four. Glory to God. He said, listen, don't, don't tempt the Lord thy God. Don't do it. Don't do it. Amen. So we thank God for that power. The same power that Jesus had. You have it. I want you to be encouraged tonight. Glory to God. You have it. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. You have that same power. Hallelujah. Jesus says tonight, he says, tell my people, don't give up because you're getting ready to walk into a mighty breakthrough. Glory to God. I preached on Jonah Sunday and it was a powerful message. Glory to God from broken to a breakthrough. Hallelujah. From broken to a breakthrough. And so many of you, you're already on the brink of that breakthrough. Many of you have received that word already. Glory to God. And so guess what? You're getting ready to step into it. Hallelujah. Anytime God releases his word to you and you receive his word, you just sit back and wait for the manifestation. But then there are those of you that need to hear this word tonight to be encouraged to know that your breakthrough is right in front of you. Hallelujah. Your blessing is right in front of you. Many of you, it's a phone call away. Glory to God. God bless your divinity tonight. It was so good seeing you Saturday. Glory to God. Listen, you are on a brink of a major breakthrough and you have to tie a knot and hold on to your faith. See, the enemy comes to, to send distractions. Let me just help somebody right here. That's it, Sister Yolanda. You're not giving up. I know that's right. Hallelujah. And in between the blessing, God encourages us. In between your miracle, God always sends a right now word to encourage you. Hallelujah. Prophetess Nicola, you got the job. See, now you should have inboxed that to me because you know I got the, hey, hi, it is your shot. You know I got to praise them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> they don't understand why I'm praising the Prophetess Nicola. You should have inboxed me with that. Woo, hey, hey. Glory to God. Somebody just shout glory to God. Can I just get everybody to just shout glory to God? Hallelujah with Prophetess Nicola. Hallelujah. She got the new job. Hey, hey, hi, it is your shot. Ooh, we thank God for promotion. God said it. Mm. And he will bring it to pass. Woo! Hey, hey. Hallelujah. If he spoke it, mm. glory to God. He shall make it good. All right. All right. All right. See, you stare me up in the Holy Ghost right here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us turn to Galatians chapter. Mm. Hey, hey. Ooh, I feel like running now. Mm. Listen, if we was in the church, we take a sprint. We we be running for Jesus. I'm trying to tell you. Woo! Hey, hey! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout promotion is knocking at my door. Hey, yes, God. Somebody shout, I'm next in line. Woo! Hey, hey! Hallelujah. Cause see the Bible says rejoice with them that rejoice. So guess what? You rejoice with the woman of God as God has given her the blessing. Amen. Of new employment. 
God can do that for you too. Mm. He, listen, listen, when you rejoice, when somebody receives a blessing, God can do exceeding abundantly. Ah, glory to God. Above all that you could ask or think, God can give you greater. Come on here. Hallelujah. That's why somebody shout, I got next. I got next. I got next. I'm next in line. Woo. I felt that. Hey, hey. Woo. How you did your shot? Somebody shout, I'm next in line. Promotion is knocking at my door. <laughs> Hey, glory to God. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. All right. It's like it's like God just inserted that so we all can praise him. <laughs> Somebody showed the Lord just inserted a praise in the message tonight. Mm. I like when God does that. I love when he does that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to be encouraged tonight also to know that just like God did it for our prophetess Nicola, he's more than able to do it for you. But I just speak promotion over those of you that need promotion Hallelujah. I speak jobs and careers. Mm. Glory to God. Over those of you that are standing in the need of a job, you're standing in the need of a new career. I speak that over your life now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We call it forth in Jesus' hey, hey. name. Hey, hey. We call it forth in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shall do it for me, Lord. Mm. Somebody shall do it for me, Lord. I feel a release right here. Hallelujah. For many of you, somebody shall do it for me, Lord. Glory to God. Galatians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on. Rejoice. Thank you, Jesus. We rejoicing. We are rejoicing. We giving God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, Sister Danielle. She said, I registered my business today. Come on here. Come on, entrepreneurs. <laughs> yes. Come on, business owners. Hey, hey. Mm. Somebody shout, God is doing it. Listen, there is no recession. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we shifting right here. Mm. Somebody shout, there is no there is no recession. I don't know what I don't know what they're talking about. Hey, hallelujah. For my God mm. shall supply. Ooh, this is good tonight. All of my need. Hallelujah. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 24, hey, hey, yes, God, I hear you. The earth is the Lord's mm. and the fullness thereof. Hey, the world and they that dwell therein. Somebody shout, my God owns everything. So because my God owns everything, when I stand in need of something, he is more than able to release it. You just got to line up with him. Somebody shout, align me, Lord. Come on. Because see, in order to get the blessing, you got to be aligned. Come on, he ain't blessing everybody. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Come on. <laughs> you got to align yourself with the Father. Mm. Hey, yes, God. You got to align. You. Come on, come on, come on. Lord, align me so that I can receive your blessings. God, align me so that I can receive your miracle. God, align me so that when the breakthroughs are released, I'm next in line. Woo! Hi, did it, your shot. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. My God owns everything. Somebody shout, my God owns everything. A cattle on a thousand hills. There's nothing too hard for God. Woo. Hey, thank you, Jesus. I felt another release right there. There's nothing too hard for God. Come on. <laughs> Somebody shout, do it for me, God. Mm, I feel such a release, y'all. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, do it for me, Lord. Do it for me, God. I hear the Lord saying that some of you that are standing in the need of the release. Yes, God, I hear you. And he's going to release it unto you the moment that you align yourself with him. Somebody shout, align me, Lord. And some of you need to be realigned. Hallelujah. You need to be realigned. God's going to get you back on track. <laughs> ah, glory to God. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Let's start reading at verse 7. Amen. We're talking about not giving up. Amen. Listen, God says, keep on moving. Keep on going. Hallelujah. Keep on pressing your way. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. You know what? Well, let's go up to verse 6. Is that all right? So we're at Galatians 6 and 6. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> <clears throat> to 
you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Excuse me. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. Come on, Hallelujah. Verse 6 reads, Let him that is taught in the word communicate just say something nice unto you. him that teacheth in all good things. Somebody shout You're good things. Good there. things. And be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. The Lord says, don't give up. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Glory to God. The Bible also says, be not weary in verse 9. Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, somebody shall do season. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Hallelujah. And don't get weary. <clears throat> Be not weary in well-doing. This is your due season. Many of you, you have suffered for this place you're in. Glory to God. And the devil wants you to feel defeated. He wants you to feel like it's not going to happen. Anytime God gives me an encouraging word for the body of Christ like this, you are right on the, like literally on the brink. Like one, one more step and you're going to step right into the blessing. Every time God gives me a word like this for the body of Christ, I mean, you are like literally right there. Hallelujah. Many testimonies are going to flood in. Many of you are going to reach out to the ministry and say, God did it. Hallelujah. And we're going to praise God with you. Glory to God. Because many of you have prophetic words that were spoken over your life. And the manifestation of the prophetic word is about to come to pass. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. The manifestation of the prophetic word is about to come to pass. So God says, <clears throat> don't become weary in well-doing. You cannot become weary Hallelujah. Weary is the state that happens right before you faint. You cannot become weary. God bless you all tonight. You cannot become weary in well-doing. I got to keep saying it till it hits your spirit tonight. Hallelujah. Listen, God says, be not weary in well-doing. So that means you are doing well. Catch this revelation. Come on. That means that you're doing something right. But God is saying, don't become weary. I, I need you to stay on task. I need you to stay focused. Hallelujah. I need you to get to a place to where you realize that you cannot be deceived. This is good. This is good. Hallelujah. You cannot be deceived. Glory to God. There's a confirmation right there on Periscope. We bless Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God for his word on tonight. Let us turn to Philippians chapter 3. Those of you on our prayer line, amen, stay right there. Those of you on our prayer call tonight, just stay right there. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3, verse, um, let's start reading at verse 13. Glory to God. Do you all have your Bibles or y'all just looking at me? <laughs> Listen, I really want y'all to go get your sword. Can you go get your word? Go get your word or, or get another device. Blessings to you, um, woman of God, Shauna. God bless you all tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. This is the Apostle Paul. What does he say here? He says, my brethren, I count not myself to be apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things that are before he says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus. Let's go back up to verse 13. Before the apostle Paul could press, there was something that he needed to do. What did he need to do? Verse 13, he says, I count not myself to be apprehended. So first he had to realize that he was in a race. First he had to realize that he was in Come on. He was, he was in the race. He says, I count not myself to be stopped. He said, as I'm moving forward, I, I can't be stopped. He says, I cannot be apprehended. He says, but this one thing I do, somebody shout is personal. 
Come on. He says, this one thing I do. Hallelujah. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. Come on. Because in order to press forward to the things that are before you, you got to forget what's behind you. And sometimes you got to forget the people. You got to forget the situation. You forgot. You got to forget a whole lot of things. Listen, glory to God. And that ties into forgive and forget. Uh-oh. Come on. Somebody shout, God is telling me to, for to forget. So if God is telling me to forget, I have to also forgive. Uh-oh. Come on here. Hallelujah. See, a lot of times we don't want to let go of things because we keep it as a memory because we want to hold on to the memory. God is saying, let it go. He's saying, let it go. Let your past go. Let the situation go. Let the circumstance go. Whatever was facing you, whatever was trying to overtake you, let it go. Let it go. Come on, let go and let God have what? His way. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody show, I'm letting it go tonight. Because in order for you to press your way, you, you got to, he says, listen, I'm forgetting those things which are behind me. So he's saying, I choose not to remember it anymore. He says, I'm choosing to let it go. Hey, hey, because I know what's in front of me. My God. See, when you know what's in front of you, then you can press. See, a lot of times you may not know what's in front of you. Some of you may not even know what's ahead of you because you're not in the presence of God. But the moment you get in the presence of God, he will reveal to you what he's getting ready to release to you. Come on. Hallelujah. That's right. Let, let it all go. Let everything go. Let the words go. I hear the spirit of the Lord say some of you are holding on to the words that people have spoke over your life. Let it go. Because that's not you. That's not your portion. Hallelujah. You're not that. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on. Get free tonight. You're not that. You're not that. You're not that person that they said you were. Come on, somebody. You may have made some mistakes, but you ask God to forgive you. Who am I talking to tonight? So because you ask God to forgive you for your part. Hallelujah. Many of you have already repented. And God says when you repent, he, he throws your sin into the sea of forgetfulness, never to remember it anymore. So if God doesn't remember it, why should you remember it? Come on. If God has wiped the slate clean, help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. Hallelujah. If God has forgiven you, once you have repented, then you have to now forgive yourself. Come on. Just, just shake yourself loose. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just shake yourself loose. Sometimes you got to just shake some things off of you. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to say, you know what? That's not my portion anymore. Hallelujah. That does not belong to me anymore. Higher did your shot. Glory to God. That's not my portion anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's not my portion. Somebody shout that that that's that's not that's not in my purpose and in my destiny. Hallelujah. It's not even attached to your calling and who God has called you to be. So some things you gotta just shake off. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some people you just gotta shake off. Some situations, some things that happen, you gotta say, you know what? It's all right. I'm moving forward. Hey, hi, Edidio Sha. Hallelujah. You got to say, listen, you know what? I'm moving forward. I'm shaking the dust off my feet and I'm moving forward. I'm going to keep on pressing in God. And as you continue to walk, as you continue to press, he's going to heal you along the way. Glory to God. He's going to deliver you along the way. Sometimes you got to shut the door and keep the door shut. Come on here. God said he gave us a key. Two weeks ago, he said, I've given you the key, keys to the kingdom. Come on. But see that key to the kingdom, there's the kingdom of God again. That key to the kingdom of God gives you access to the holies of holies. It gives you access to going higher than the old shot behind the veil and pray. Hallelujah. That key gives you access. Hallelujah. To worship God, to praise God. So God is saying he's given us a key already. Hallelujah. So you now have what is called access. But now you have to realize that even though you have access. Hallelujah. You got to still say on. You got to still say on that. You have to still stay on the side where God is. You got to still stay in his kingdom. 
Come on here. You have to still stay connected to God, which means you have to stay in right standing with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just want to say to the children that are watching, listen, all the children, and when I say children, meaning those of you that know me, listen, you, you're about to get unfriended. I'm not here to play with anybody. Listen, I, I got it. Listen, I'm ministering to God's people. I'm not here to play. Listen, I don't even play with my own children. Glory to God. So I'm not playing with anybody else's children. All right. So all the children, listen, hold your comments. All right. You a child. Come on here. That's the problem right there. It ain't enough rebuke. Parents ain't telling their kids to sit down and be quiet. Study to be quiet. Because sometimes if you're quiet, then you can hear what is being released. Come on here. Block and delete. Oh, it will happen. Amen. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Somebody's soul is in jeopardy. And you over here playing around. All right. God is saying, stay encouraged. He's saying, listen, I need you to forget what's behind you. He's saying, I need for you to get in a position to where you just forget it. Just, just allow God to take it away from your memory. Allow God to take it complete. Ah, you did your shot. Mm. My Lord, God, you want me to say that? <laughs> Listen, I got to say it as I hear it. Some of you better stop playing with God because there's some things that are before you that are going to come upon you if you keep playing with God. <laughs> I just heard it. I got to say it as I hear it. Come on. You, got, you, 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 you have to get to a place in your life. And this is not just for children. This is for also adults. I hear God. You have to get to a place where God is serious. You have to honor him and you have to reverence him. God is not a play toy. He's not a genie. He's not, he's not something that you put up on the shelf and you just go to him whenever you need a blessing. It doesn't work that way. God is God. And he is so sovereign. God has the ability. Listen, the, the Bible says the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. I've seen God bless people and I've seen people play with God and he snatch it away. I've seen it. I've seen it. Come on here. I've seen it with my own two eyes. And it's a sad thing. Because you go through the whole process of getting blessed. You go through the whole process of getting healed. You go through the whole entire process. And then God just snatch it. I've seen people who were highly anointed. Anointed by God. Gifted by God. Blessed by God. And they got caught up in sin. Next thing you know, the anointing started lifting. Come on. And they started looking real cuckoo and crazy. And then they started talking crazy. Come on here. They wasn't saying the same things that they hired did the old shot that they were saying before. Come on. You can tell when the mind has shifted. Oh, oh Holy Ghost is talking tonight. You can tell when the mind has shifted. And that mind is no longer <laughs> the mind of Christ. Come on, because it has shifted. Come on here. That's why God said the carnal mind is an enemy to God. So when we're in our carnal mind, I'm still in the word. The carnal mind is an enemy to God. When we're in our carnal mind, we're in our flesh. Learn to be quiet. Come on here. Learn to be quiet. Especially when you're approaching God's chosen vessels. Learn to be quiet. I had a woman of God inbox me the other day and said she didn't appreciate what I posted on Facebook. I had some choice words that I was typing. The Holy Spirit said, delete it. And then you know what God told me to do? Just don't even worry about it. He said, I'm going to take care of it. Hey, hey, hi, it is your shot. He said, I'm going to take care of it. You have to be careful when you come up against God's prophet. Glory to God. This is how familiarity comes in. And you can't become familiar. Somebody needs to hear this tonight. You can't become familiar with God's mouthpiece. Because when you become familiar, you think you know that person. 
I got sisters in the Lord. You still don't know me. Hey, hey. Higher did he o shot. Glory to God. I got sisters in Christ back in Philadelphia and they still don't know me. Come on here. I've learned not to get familiar. Hallelujah. I got sisters in Christ here in North Carolina. Can I tell you on this broadcast, you still don't know me. <laughs> Hallelujah. You might know me the way you think you know me, but you, you really don't. You really don't know me. Hallelujah. Because if you knew, mm, 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 this is good tonight. If you really knew and understood, you will respect the anointed. You will, you will respect the calling. You will say, you know what? I'm either going to submit under it. I'm either going to submit under it. I'm either going to pray for the woman of God in the ministry or I'm going to depart. Somebody shout just like that. <laughs> Come on here. Because you don't want to bring a curse upon. Hey, hey. Higher did your shot. You don't want to bring a curse upon yourself. Come on. You want to stay blessed. Somebody shout. I want to stay blessed. I need to stay blessed. So I watch my mouth. I watch my actions. I watch my motives. Come on here. That's right. Just like that. We have to be very careful because the same person that you're coming against has your blessing. The same person that you're talking about and you got your mouth on has your miracle in their mouth. Come on here. <laughs> That's right. We need to stay blessed. Stop talking all the time. Some of you running your mouth too much. And you know why? Because you don't have no leader. No, no, there's no leader over your life. There's no accountability. Because I promise you, if you had a leader and you had somebody that you was accountable to, they would be teaching you to be quiet. Come on. They would be ministering to you right now and praying for you saying, listen, you were ever, you were ever, listen. I love correction. Anybody, anybody love correction? Come on here. Anybody love correction? <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible says, let me give you some more Bible. The word of God says that God chastises those whom he, I need y'all to type it. What's the last word? God chastises those whom he, come on, I need y'all to type it. God chastises those whom he loves. Right? He corrects us because he loves us. Right? That's just like a parent. Help me, Holy Ghost. We shifting again. That's just like a parent. That never chastises his, her, his or her children. If you don't never reprimand your children, they will go, listen. They will go be, far and beyond your control. If you don't never chastise your children, they will grow up to be very disrespectful, very defiant, right? And after a while, you won't be able to tame or control them. Uh-oh. The spirit that you never dealt with will start coming against you. Come on. It's the same thing in God's kingdom. It's the same thing in the house of God. You had to correct it and you got to deal with it right on the spot. If you don't deal with it, it's going to continue. Anything that you don't... <laughs> Oh, this is good tonight. We shifting again. Come on here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm so grateful that my mom, my mother popped me on my tail when I was little. I thank God. I'm so grateful. Listen, I have one brother, one sibling. If he was watching right now, he, 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 he would concur. He say, sis, you telling the truth. Listen, my brother didn't get whooped as much as I did. And he'll tell you he, he wished that he did. My parents, when I did wrong, they chastised me. I knew what punishment was. My parents didn't have no problem with correcting me, and I'm so glad that they did. Amen. I believe that my parents saw something in me that I couldn't see in myself as a child. Come on. I know my grandmother saw it. Amen. Because she prayed for me and ministered to me. I remember my grandmother just holding me many times and just praying over me as a young child. So I thank God for that. So when I see someone who has not been disciplined, you know, they, they had the liberty to do whatever they wanted to do. Most of the time in their adulthood, they're the same way. They don't honor anything. They don't reverence anything. Why? Because they never were taught. We shifting again, y'all. We shifting. 
They were never taught. So if you were never taught, you need the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to teach you how to reverence God. Because the moment you reverence God, then you can reverence his leaders. See, this is how disrespect comes into the house of the Lord. This is how leaders get disrespected so easy. This is how people become familiar with leadership. And then they, be, they disrespect leadership. That should not be in the body of Christ. That should not be. Because guess what you do? You put a lid on your blessing. You put a lid on it. How can God bless you and you're cursing them? you cursing the mouthpiece. <laughs> you're talking about... How you talking about the prophet and that's the same prophet you go to to hear from God? Wait a minute. So you talk about the ministry... That at one time you didn't like, but now all of a sudden you love it. And you want to receive from the same fountain that you cursed. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Somebody shout double-minded. That, that sounds double-minded to me. And what does the Bible say about a double-minded man? A double-minded man is unstable. Teach Holy Ghost. Unstable in all of his or her ways. Just unstable. Just all over the place. No foundation, just all over the place. Come on. The wind blow, you blow with the wind. The wind blow this way, you blow over there. You know, somebody say go up, you go up. Somebody say go there, you go there. You're like a puppet because you're now unstable. If that's you tonight, just shout help me, Lord. You ain't even got to type it. You, you don't even have to type to help me, Lord. <laughs> Just ask God to help you. Come on. If that's you tonight and this word has found you, just, just shout in your atmosphere, help me, Lord. Please help me, God. Help me, Jesus. Help me not to be double-minded. Help me not to come against leadership. Help me to have a love for you, and then that way I can love your people. Help me, Jesus. Help me. Help me. It's, it's nothing wrong with asking God to help you. But see what happens, thank you, Holy Spirit. We become prideful. And if we become we become prideful, what will happen? The spirit of pride will overtake you. If you become prideful, now pride will over exceed the fact that you could have repented. Come on. The Bible says that pride, hallelujah, when pride, the spirit of pride steps in, destruction comes after that. Come on. So we are not to become prideful. In other words, when God is correcting us, receive the correction. When God is rebuking us, receive the rebuke. Come on here. Hallelujah. So that God can bless you and continue to bless you to be a blessing to someone else. Come on. In the beginning of the live, what did I say? Living this life is not easy. It's not a bed of flowers. You don't wake up every day and smell roses. Now, if you buy yourself some roses, that's probably the only time you're going to smell them. Or if you marry, then your spouse get you some roses. <laughs> Come on here. Hallelujah. But this way right here is narrow. Hey, hey. Hi, in the deal, shot. I said, this way right here is a narrow walk. Glory be to God. The Bible says narrow is the way that leads to everlasting life. Hallelujah. But broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction. Come on here. Thank you, baby girl, for sharing the video tonight. My baby's on. Glory to God. Listen, narrow is the way that leads to everlasting life. Listen, and on this narrow way, everybody ain't on. Hey, hey. Hi, I felt the release right there. Everybody is not on the narrow path. See, people like the broad path because they can blend in. <laughs> Come on, they can hide, you know. They can hide. Can nobody see me? You know, yeah. Hey, can nobody see me? You know what? I'm just gonna. I'm matter of fact, I'm gonna sit back here. Can nobody see me? <laughs> and God is saying, "I see you, peekaboo." <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth in the Holy Ghost. God is saying, "No, I see you." You might think man don't. Hey, hey, how you did the old shot? And and you know what else God say? I hear you too. Ooh, that's for somebody. Ooh, how you did the old shot? Thank you, Jesus. God is saying, I hear and I see. Mm. My Lord. So the person that you're talking about might not have heard you. <laughs> but God heard it. Mm. Woo. Hallelujah. That's just like when we say God is working on me. You know, people say, oh, he just working on me. You know, 
what they say i'm just a wretch undone they'll say uh, what's the other saying it's another saying that people say he ain't through with me yet you know well, we make excuses why we have not met the mark we make excuses why we have not given up those things that we need to give up <laughs> we make the excuses and, it, and it, here, here's another one god knows my heart Y'all know I'm telling the truth tonight. Y'all know I'm telling the truth in the Holy Ghost tonight. Somebody shout 100% truth. That's, that's the one right there that every, a whole lot of people use. When they don't want to come up higher in God, when they don't want to come out of sin, you know what they say? He know, God know, God know my heart. He knows my heart. You know how dangerous that is? Can I, can I give somebody some revelation that God gave me with that? You know how dangerous that is? The, God does know your heart. But what happens when your heart is wicked? Mm. What happens when your heart is black? He know my heart. That's deep right there, right? Come on. It's very dangerous for you to say, oh, he know my heart. I'm a wretch undone. He, I, he ain't through with me yet. You know. Why do we do that? Come on. And I'm saying we because I'm a part of the body of Christ. Why, why do we do that? Why do we feel like that's okay? When you have souls in your family that are watching you. Mm. You have people on your job that are watching you. You have people that are in your neighborhood that are watching you. You have family members that are watching you. Come on. And, and then, guess what? At one moment, they're ready to come to God. But because you don't open your mouth. Uh-oh. And you done slandered your brother or your sister. They ain't coming now. So what did Jesus say? He said, don't be a stumbling block for your brother or your sister. I'm still in the word, y'all. So Jesus is saying, we got to watch our motives. Watch your words. Watch what you say. Hallelujah. Watch the way you come off to people. Come on here. Hallelujah. Sometimes we need to be more reserved. We got to be a little more laid back. Hallelujah. My leaders, let me just say this. The leaders that I served. The three leaders that I served, in their presence, I was so humble. I honored the God in them. Listen, they would say something and I, I yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I, you know, because I, I didn't want to displease God. I didn't get smart. Who gets smart with a pastor? I didn't get smart. You know, I didn't, um, you know, that's just like even our parents. The Bible says, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. We shifting again. Listen, when God says, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right, and your days shall be long upon the earth. This is why we're losing a lot of youth. We're losing a lot of our young people because they're not respecting their parents. Somebody shout, the word of God is true. God's word is true. We're losing our children, our young people. You know why? Because they're not respecting authority. How is it that your children can blatantly disrespect an adult and you don't have no problem with that? I wish one of my children would. I wish one of my children would disrespect somebody in front of me. They wouldn't have no teeth or... Y'all can ask my children. They'll tell you. <laughs> I don't play. Because I can't preach to God's people and at my house be in shambles. The devil is a liar. Come on here. That's why the apostle Paul said, I will not be a shipwreck. My life ain't going to be a shipwreck. You mean to tell me I'm going to preach the word of God to you? And I'll be a castaway? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So I, I'm encouraging you. But then again, my life is in shambles. My house is a wreck. Turned upside down. Something ain't right with that. Come on here. Somebody shout, God sees everything. Hallelujah. Come on. God sees everything. We, we shifting again right here, y'all. Somebody's being blessed. Listen, listen, take the, take the correction. We talk about the three C's right here in this ministry. Take the correction in. We got some new viewers. I hear the Lord. He says some new viewers are watching and, and you know what the new viewers are saying? I need this. I need this. This is what I need. I need this. You know, sometimes your blessing is held up because you're not obeying God. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. She says, I'm full grown and I know better. Come on here. Hallelujah. We should all know better, right? <laughs> but sometimes God got to come and remind us when we are in error. Glory to God. Listen, I, I was so, hallelujah. Blessings to you, Prophetess T. I know you've been on for some time. Blessings, my sister. Listen, my former leaders, let me tell you something. Anytime they came in my presence, my responsibility was, what do you need? Not what do I need from you, but what do you need because you're my leader. See, this is why God elevates. That's why God moves in this ministry because the humbleness, hallelujah, that rests here in this ministry and the effectiveness, hallelujah, that's why God continues to get exalted in this ministry. No goodness of my own, no goodness of our own. He continues to move and he continues to speak to us, hallelujah, because of the servitude. I don't preach one thing and then live another way. I don't do that. Hallelujah. I, listen, I reverence God so much. Listen, if I'm in disobedience, you know what I tell my members? If y'all see me in disobedience, you better run the other way and pray for me. Come on here. So you don't have pastors that say that. You got pastors that'll say, oh no, condone my mess. No, don't condone my mess. If I'm in mess and I'm in sin as your leader, as your pastor, you better. All right, pastor. Thank you. Thank you, but I, I got to go because I can't be entangled in that. The Bible says, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I can't get no help. See, you you won't, you don't have pastors that say that because you know why? Because they want your membership. They want you to stay there. They, they, you know, they want you to, you know, go to hell with them. I'm just saying. And hell is a place. <laughs> Glory to God. Hell is real. Come on here. So they'll tell you how wonderful you are. They're going to tell you, you know, where the prosperity is. They're going to tell you where the blessings are. Come on here. But they're not going to tell you about your soul and how you on a fast train to hell. They're not going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you that because they want to be your friend. Come on here. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm so glad my leaders were not my friend. Hey, hey. How you did your shot? I'm so glad. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My leaders were not my friend. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> I am so glad, people of God. And I'm saying this humbly. You don't understand. Because as I look at my life and I look at the ministry and where God is taking this ministry, it's only because of the servitude. It's only because of the humbleness. Glory to God. Listen. Can I, can I just help somebody right here? And I don't know who needs to hear this. Listen. Can you imagine being highly anointed and people see the anointing on your life and you haven't even stepped in it yet? So most of, most of the time within the body of Christ, there were people who were envious, who were jealous. Sister Pamela, you know, they, they had all kinds of arts against me. You know, there were people in the church and they would look at me. I guess they knew and they could see what God was getting ready to do. So the attacks was coming. And I had to learn to be quiet. Take my happy self home. Cry my pillow. You know, cry on my pillow. Release my tears. Give it to God. And then go back to the house of God again and serve. See, that was my life. But I'm thankful and grateful that I went through it. Come on here. You got people fighting in the church now. You got people who always got arts against each other. You got people that always want to say something. You got people that, I, that, 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 that my opinion and how I feel. Well, who asked you for your opinion? Come on, put an amen on that. Come on here. Who who even asked you what what did you think about anything? Come on, because to be honest, God gonna have His way anyway. <laughs> right, Providence Nicola? The Lord's going to get the glory anyway. If he got to squeeze the glory out of you, he going to get it. <laughs> listen, hallelujah. So you can come like, listen, hey, hey, higher than your shot. Listen, you can come, you can come obedient or you can be like Jonah. Come on, you can be like Jonah. We Listen, we, we talked about Jonah Sunday, right? Hallelujah. Jonah went through some stuff. All because of his disobedience. God told him to go to one place. He went completely opposite. Where? From the presence of the Lord. Come on. We think we still doing good. 
gossiping, backbiting, all kinds of stuff. We, we still thinking that we in the presence of the Lord. Mm. God moving in my life, but you got your mouth on everybody. Mouth just going just like this. Y'all know I'm telling the truth because some of y'all, it's just like that. You just talking and God is hearing all the venom. He, he, he's seeing all the venom that's coming out your mouth like a snake. Redman sukodi o sha. You just, you just, mm. Hallelujah. This is why God said, touch not my anointed. Let me give somebody this revelation real quick. When God says, touch not my anointed, that's not with your physical hand. That's not with your hands. Because most of the time, you know, people ain't even in the presence of people when they talking about them. Catch this revelation, Prophetess Nicola. God gave me this years ago. It's not with your hand that you're touching them. It's with your mouth. Mm. Woo. When God told me that, well, Providence Nicola, I was done. Hey, hey. How are you, Shy? Thank you, Jesus. He said, it's not even with their hands. They're not touching you with their hands. I'm speaking to the prophets. They're touching you with their mouth. You can't curse what God has blessed. Hey, hey. How are you, Didio Shy? You can't curse whom God is blessed. <laughs> Somebody needed that encouragement tonight. I felt a mighty release right there. Mm. They tried to curse you, but they, they can't. You, you can't curse whom God is blessed. You know that curse will boomerang and come back to you. And sometimes you don't even have to say anything. You just sit back and watch it happen. You'll be like, oh my goodness. Somebody said, this is confirmation for me on Periscope. Holy Ghost got me. It's for a reason. It's for a reason. And you know what happened, Prophetess T? You know what happened? God is speaking to people and they just sitting there. And they just like, oh, that's so good. And they don't know that the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to them. <laughs> so that they can get themselves together. Can I just give you all, can I give y'all something that happened to me? Can I give y'all a testimony? I want to help somebody with this. I remember I was an altar worker. I was working on an altar. I, I want to I share this testimony to help somebody. I was working on an altar. I was an altar worker, right? And this one sister that I was working with, she was so mean. I mean, she was so mean. She was snatched up from me. You know, she was just so... Her spirit just, and I'm like, so I said, okay, God, I know you called me to work the altar. I worked the altar for three and a half years. All right. That's why I'm able now in my ministry to work the altar. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm sharing that because this stuff don't happen overnight. You don't just wake up one day and just have it. No, you have to serve in it first. Right. And so I remember this one sister and I, you know what? And God was dealing with my heart. Let me help somebody. The Lord was dealing with me. He wasn't dealing with her. Because I got to a place, Sister Joyce, where I said, Lord, you see and you know how she's treating me. Listen. You know what God said to me? He said, pray for yourself. Because it's not her. It's you. And I said, wait a minute. That thing messed me up. Because I'm like, Lord, you see, you know, I'm just, I'm just being, I'm just, I'm just following the instructions. That's all I'm doing. And you know what God said to me? And see, God was molding me. This was over. Oh my goodness. I think it had to be 17, maybe 18 years ago. That long. It's been a long time. And I remember God was dealing with me. He said, daughter, I need you to read Psalm 51. And 10, <laughs> where David said, create in me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. See, I didn't know God wanted to elevate me. I couldn't see the, I couldn't see the elevation, but God wanted to elevate me. And he always elevates you in the presence of your enemies. It ain't got nothing to do with the person that got a cold spirit. It has not, listen, the enemy is just using them. Somebody caught that? Listen, I went through that for almost three months. I said, Lord, 
I need you to help me. Listen, and when, when we had to take the people downstairs to pray for them, I said, God, I know she's going to push me. She's going to bogart me, you know, because that's what she did. You know, it's like, uh-uh, you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do this and you can't do that. And I said, okay. So I had to learn how to humble myself. And I just sat back. I said, you know what? You got it. Okay. And it was always that one person left, Sister Kashina. It was always that one person that was left standing in the room that God had me to minister to. So it wasn't about the four people that she prayed for. Uh-oh. Somebody catch this revelation. It wasn't about the three or four people that, that needed prayer as we took them down from the altar. They accepted Jesus Christ. It had nothing to do with that. That was her thing. She had to be, you know, big and all, you know, she, she had to do all of that, right? It was God showing me that he wanted to cultivate my gift. So he said, if you faithful over the little, mm, he said, I'll make you ruler over much. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And the word got back to my pastor. Look at how, look at how amazing God is. The word got back to my pastor that I was a servant. The word got back to my leader that I had a humble spirit. Come on. In the midst of it all. And guess who was giving the report? The lady who was over the altar workers. Because she was watching everything. She was what? Oh, y'all don't want to talk. That's why when, when God said he sees everything, he sees everything. Come on here. A lot of times it has nothing to do with the wicked person. Let the wicked person be wicked. Listen, the devil got his own kingdom. He got his own people. Who am I talking to? Listen, and all you got to do is be a pawn for the devil and he will use you. Let me just encourage somebody. Don't let the devil use you now. Come on. If you coming up against God's chosen, then you're being used by the devil. Come on. If you coming up against God's people and you got a nasty attitude and a wicked heart, the devil got you. Come on. He got you. So you need to repent, come back to God and ask God to heal you, deliver you and set you free. That's like starting all over again. Come on. But why is it that we get to that place? You know why? Just like we read here in Matthew chapter four, when Jesus was tempted of the devil. Come on. See, the enemy is going to tempt you, but are you going to give into the temptation? Oh, this is good tonight. We shifting again. Hallelujah. The enemy's job is to tempt you. But are you going to give into that temptation? Come on, flesh just raging, flesh just all over the place. Flesh telling you to do this, your flesh telling you to do that. It's flesh. When you're in your flesh, the Bible says you are an enemy to God. Isn't that deep? Y'all don't believe me? Somebody, somebody need the scripture? Let me give, let me give you the scripture. Let me give you the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give it to you. Uh huh. Some repentance needs to take place because God is coming with a mighty sword. Something like that happened today. I passed that one. See, there's confirmation. Come on here. Sister Kashina says something like that happened today. Come on. I'm not just talking just to be talking. And some of y'all, y'all say that. Oh, there she go again. It's the Lord. Somebody shout, it's God. Mm, 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 mm. It's the Lord, y'all. Listen, I... You know, Sister Linda, now I realize why I had to go through a whole lot of things. I, I, as I look back, as I look back now, I understand. Hallelujah. But I want to encourage you, Sister Linda, even as God encouraged me, as I was going through and I couldn't really understand the process. God kept telling me, daughter, keep going. Mm. Just like I'm telling you all tonight. Keep on going. There's great purpose inside of you. Each and every one of you. There's great purpose inside of you. And Sister Linda, there's a ministry inside of you that God is actually cultivating. And after he finished cultivating it, he's going to birth it out. Because you have great leadership on your life. Sister Linda, you have great leadership on your life. You are born leader. I hear the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are a born leader, Sister Linda. And that's why you go through so much warfare. 
Hallelujah. That's why you go even through jealousy. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying the spirit of jealousy follows you, Sister Linda. You don't even have to do anything, but because of who you are, devil don't like you. You can walk in the room, all eyes on you, and then everybody just, you like, I don't even, I'm, I, I didn't even want to show up. This is why, this is the reason why I didn't even want to come. It's like I can hear you saying, this, I, this is the reason why I don't even really fool with people. That's what I hear you saying, Sister Linda. Glory to God. But the Lord says, keep on going. Your influence is needed. Mm. My God. Sister Linda, your influence is needed. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. My God, my God. How are you, did he, oh, You know, I had a prophet come to me years ago and, and said to me, the Lord said, the spirit of jealousy is going to continue to follow you. I was like, uh-uh, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. He said, you can rebuke it all you want. He said, but it has to follow you. Because when 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 jealousy follows you, promotion is right there. You got to pass the test, though. Mm -hmm. You, you got to pass the test. Hallelujah. And that's not always easy. Because the Bible says a jealous spirit is as cruel as the grave. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. What's in the grave? Dead folk. Ain't no life in the grave. Mm, catch this revelation, somebody. Somebody catch it. That's why right. death is in the grave. That's why right. ain't no life in the grave. So the Bible says jealousy. Who am I helping tonight? Higher did he You don't have to be jealous of anybody. Why? Because God has given you gifts and he's given you talents. <laughs> the Bible says that every man is given a gift and a talent. Come on. When you have the parable about the, the, those that had the talents, the Bible says that one man had one talent and he buried his talent in the ground. But then you had the one that had the five talents. He did what? He used those talents. And God gave him five more. I'm still in the book, right? I'm still in the book, Prophetess Tina. I'm still in the book. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, we, we still in the word, y'all. We are still in the word. Since so, so the shot, my pastor's still in the word, y'all. She, she's still in the word. Still in the word. Mm. Glory to God. Let me let me let me um, bring your attention to Romans chapter eight. Yes, Lord. Romans chapter eight. Glory to God. Blessings to you all on Periscope. I'm so glad you all are being helped tonight. I'm so glad that this word is blessing you. Romans chapter eight. What time is it? Oh, we on good timing too. Hmm. Okay. Romans chapter eight, verse seven and eight. All right. Glory to God. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 7 and 8. Hallelujah. What does it say? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. If you look up the word enmity, enmity means enemy. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh... Cannot please God. I didn't say it. The word says it. So every time we're in our flesh and in our feelings. Come on here. Somebody shout. It's not about my feelings anymore. It's not about my feelings. It's not about my feelings. Because how many of you know your feelings can lead you the wrong way? You ever become emotional about something and you realize it wasn't even what you thought? Holy Ghost is speaking tonight. H have you ever got emotional about something and you realize like, wait a minute. That wasn't even, I was overreacting or I was overthinking. And that, it wasn't even that. Has that ever happened to anybody? I know that's happened to me. Come on. Hey, have you ever, let's say for instance, and I'm talking to the singles, you know, you, you got in, involved with somebody, you know, you thought they liked you. You thought they loved you. You know, they told you a bunch of sweet nothings. And you got caught up in your emotions and you was like, oh, this person really liked me. And then you realized that they never did. They was playing you. Come on. Have you ever, you ever, anybody, anybody ever realized that? And you felt like a fool because what you thought it was, it wasn't. Mm. Your mind was playing tricks on you. <laughs> Come on here. That's being in your flesh. You didn't pray. You didn't ask God. You didn't go on a fast. 
You didn't say, Lord, help me. You, you, come on, you, you didn't steal away with God for a day or two. You just jumped right in it. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stay right here. This feel good. Ooh, 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 ooh. Because you was in your feelings, in your flesh. Holy Ghost is helping somebody tonight. And a lot of times when we're like that, we got to come out of that. Come on. We, we got to come out of that. There is no rushing God. Hey, hey. Higher than the Osha. Somebody take that word and run with it. There is no rushing in God. Everything with God is process. How do we know? It took seven days in the book of Genesis for God to create everything. Seven days. Come on. He ain't make it in one day. Come on here. Higher than the Osha. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Somebody shout, my God is a bad God. Listen. It took him seven whole days. I'm sorry, six. Let me apologize. Let me correct myself. Might have some theologians watching. Six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. All right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the first day, hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, let there be light. And there was what? Light. And the light appeared. Come on. We're not going to go there for the sake of time tonight. I got to give you all a few more scriptures, right? But God took six whole days to create the whole entire earth. And everything that he wanted on the earth, it took six days. So why do we rush God? We want things to happen in an instance. Come on here. The man that was at the side of the pool of Bethesda, it took him 38 years to get healed. Come on. Blessings to you, woman of God, Tasha. Thank you for joining tonight. Please share this broadcast as you come on. So it took him 38 years to get healed. The woman with the issue of blood, it took her 12 years to get healed. Come on. Glory to God. There are many scriptures in the Bible. There are many stories. Where the people had to wait for their healing and deliverance. I don't know why we feel like we could rush God. Let me just say this. It took years for me to get delivered. Okay. I had to realize first that I needed to be delivered. Let me help somebody with this right here. It wasn't until I realized that I needed to be delivered. Glory to God. And then God touched my mind because I wanted to please him. See, that's what I'm talking about. You don't get set free until you realize that you're pleasing God and not man. Ooh, that's good right there. Oh, that's good right there. Oh, that's so good right there. Listen, the moment, yes, God, I hear you. The moment, thank you, Jesus. Somebody getting set free tonight. Hallelujah. Listen, the moment you realize that your healing and deliverance really ain't even about you. It's all about God. Come on, because you want to please him. You say, okay, God, listen to this. Here's another scripture. Let me give you this. Mm. The Bible says we are born in sin. And shaping in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me, right? Come on. That's David. That's what he said, right? But see, we were born in sin. All of us were born in sin. None of us was born perfect, right? We were all born in sin because of the fall of Adam and Eve in the beginning, right? In the garden. We all, we all clear with that, right? So when we came to this earth, we came with sin inside of us. Let me give somebody revelation tonight. So we all came with sin inside of us, right? So we need to be delivered. Some generational curses. Listen, every family has generational curses. So when you come to God, the curse is broken because of your life. But you got to really come to him. You can't just patty cake with God. You got to really come to him so that the curse can be broken off of your bloodline. Hallelujah. This is why the enemy fights those who really come to God. Hmm. Come on. This is why the enemy fights those who are really coming to God. Can I give you all another testimony? Let me give you another testimony. My family are Jehovah Witnesses. Some of y'all know that. Right? I'm the only one saved on my father's, father's side, mother's side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody else Jehovah Witnesses. My uncles, my aunts, my cousins, all of them. My mom, my dad, all Jehovah Witnesses. I'm the only one that's saved. So let me say this. I have a lot of work to do. In other words, I have a lot of praying to do. Come on here. I prayed for years and I fasted for my family. And you know what God said? Keep living. Hey, hey. How you did your shot? He said, daughter, keep living. That's what he told me. He said, keep living and keep living the life before them. And I said, yes, Lord. So I have a great responsibility. You think I'm going to turn back and go back to the devil 
Come on, somebody. You, you, you think I'm going to turn back when I know that my family's life is in jeopardy? Somebody hear the Holy Ghost tonight. Your family's life is in jeopardy. Hallelujah. They're going to get saved because of you, but you got to line up. You, you got to line up with God. Who am I talking to tonight? We all got to line up. Come on here. But the moment you realize that you got to line up, guess what's going to happen? God going to begin to move. Hallelujah. He going to begin to move. Let me give, let me give you all another testimony. This was about maybe, I would say eight years ago, maybe nine years ago. I was in a, in a three car accident. Hallelujah. And my family witnessed God healing me. Let me just say this. Now they Jehovah witnesses, right? But they witnessed the power of God. I was in a three car accident. I was paralyzed waist down. This was 2008. It was 2008. Yeah, that was a long time ago, right? 2008, I was in a three-car accident, and I was paralyzed waist down. After the third day, God raised me up on my bed of affliction. Listen, after I prayed, I touched and agreed with my nurse. She was a Christian. She was a believer. I said, do you believe God can heal me? God can raise me up? She said, yes. Come to find out she was one of my clients, one of my hair clients. Glory to God. And I'm saying that because it was in the middle of the night that we prayed. You know how your nurse come in your room and they barely look at you. They take your vitals. Y'all know the story. Some of y'all know my testimony, but I'm speeding up for the sake of time. So we touch and agreed and we prayed. And on that third day, Prophetess Nicola, the Lord raised me up off of that bed of affliction. But I had to repent on that bed, y'all. Listen, I had to repent before God. I, listen, it was a lot going on. It was me and Jesus. We had an encounter. Glory to God. And I thank God for it. Amen, Sister Sequita, because I had to repent on that bed. See, you don't want to get put on your back. Hey, hey, hi, the Osha. Who am I talking to? You don't want to get put on your back. Listen, you don't want to get put on your back. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's not nice. It's not good. <laughs> Hallelujah. But in the midst of that, God healed me. Blessings to you, Prophet Anthony. I'm glad you're still on, you and your wife. God healed me. And so he made himself known to my family. You see? So even in the midst of me being disobedient, who am I ministering to tonight? God's still going to get the glory. Hallelujah. He's still going to get the glory out of your life. Come on, Periscope. Talk back to me. Glory to God. I thank God for that. Y'all don't know how grateful I am. Because every time my back was up against the wall, Sister Pamela, my family witnessed God bringing me out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every single time my back was up against the wall. Hallelujah. Bill stacked up on the table. This was years ago. Before I could call anybody in my family and say, can I, can I, you know, can you help me pay this? Can you help me pay that? You know what they would tell me? Oh, you got clients. Somebody going to come get their hair done. I said, you know what? That is so true. <laughs> And I'll just wait. <laughs> and sure enough, hallelujah, when I didn't depend on my family, come on here, or go to them in need. Come on, somebody needs to hear this. That's when God began to move. Not only did he send one client, he sent about four and five clients the next day. The book was completely filled up. Come on here. And God gave me what is called the overflow. Come on, glory to God, hallelujah. And then my parents would come back and say, how you make out with that bill? You said you needed 200 and something dollars, 300 and something for the, for the electric bill. You needed this, you needed that. Are, are you okay now? I said, yeah, I'm fine. The Lord made a way. <laughs> come on, what am I saying? I'm saying this because people are watching your life. Come on, and if you realize that they were watching your life, you hold your words, you are quiet your spirit, Come on. You'll realize that you got to keep on pressing in the midst of adversity. Because guess what? They want you to fall. Come on here. When the enemy is working through people, he, the enemy wants you to fall. The enemy wants you to stumble. The enemy wants you to miss the mark. Who am I talking to tonight? Hallelujah. The enemy wants you to feel like a failure. Glory to God. And that's when God reminds you, no, you are not the victim. You have the victory. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I have the victory. Hallelujah. No longer shall you be in your flesh anymore. Hey, hey, higher than the old shot, but allow the spirit of God mm, to take over. Somebody shout, I'm allow the spirit to take over. Hallelujah. I'm allow the spirit of God to take over. Hallelujah. And guess what? When you do that, you are surrendering everything to God. You're giving it to him. Amen. Somebody shout, I'm going to give everything over to God and I'm going to keep on pressing. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Philippians chapter four, verse 13, 
It says, I could do all things through Christ. Somebody hashtag all things. I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. I could do all things through Christ. Somebody shout, I could do all things, but it's through Christ who strengthens me. Isaiah 41 and 10, one of my favorite scriptures. Isaiah 41 and 10, it says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That is God speaking to us. Hallelujah. Saying, listen, I got you covered. Hallelujah. He says, fear not. He said, don't be afraid of what the devil can do to you. Don't be afraid of the enemy. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because God has you covered. Thank you, Jesus. He says, be not dismayed for I am your God. Hallelujah. He says, I will strengthen you. Who am I talking to tonight? He says, I will help you. Hallelujah. God will help you. The Bible says he's a present help in the time of trouble. Hey, hey. Woo, glory to God. I say he's a present help. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. He's a present help in the time of trouble. The Bible says, in the time of trouble, he shall hide us. Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. Somebody shout, I'm hidden in God. Hey, hey! Higher than the old shot. Come on, somebody shout, I'm hidden in God. Come on. Hallelujah. He got me covered. Hey! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, we are hidden in God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody need to praise him right there. Hallelujah. Because you realize that God got you covered. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians chapter 1 and 6. What does it say? Philippians 1 and 6 says, Being confident in this one thing, he who has begun a good work in you will continue to carry it out. He shall continue to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ's return. Hallelujah. Listen, he who has begun a good work in you Thank you, Jesus. Some of you need to shout again, Lord, realign me. Some of you need to shout that again in your atmosphere. God, reconnect me. Hallelujah. Reconnect me to you, God. Glory to God. Some of you need to come back to God. You have to repent. The blessings are held up because you're not in a repentful place. Come on here. Come on. You, you got to get to a place where you're humble and you are repentant. Glory to God. Mm, 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 mm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's right. He's a present help in the time of trouble. Glory to God. Jeremiah 29 and 11. What does this say? <coughs> Excuse me. One of my favorite scriptures. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts, plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. Mm -hmm. To give you hope in an expected end. Glory to God. That means a great future. Hallelujah. God wants to give many of you a great future. He wants to give you an expected end. He wants to give you something great in your ending. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. This is our last scripture tonight. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Yes, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. I want you all to hold this word, all right? Hold these scriptures. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. What does it say? Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, God. I think I got the wrong one. I do apologize. Okay, I was in Galatians. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Yes, yes, yes. All right, glory to God. This is the apostle Paul here. What does he say? What is he saying to the people? <laughs> he says, finally. Ah, oh, we made it. We made it. We done made it over some things. We done made it through. But finally, my brother. Mm, finally, my sister. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able mm, to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, mm, that you might be able, mm, there's that word able again, to withstand in the evil day. Oh, this is good tonight. And having done all to stand, stand. Verse 14, stand therefore, come on, with your loins girt about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness, come on, and your feet shod, shod means covered with the gospel of peace. Verse 16, and above all, the Lord is reminding us, he says, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you may be able, is that word able again, to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation. This is real good tonight. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18 in closing, praying always. Somebody shout praying, praying, praying. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit. Somebody shout, I got to pray in the spirit. Come on, you can't pray in your flesh. You got to pray in the spirit. Let's read verse 18 again. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit. Teach Holy Ghost. Come on. All them fleshly prayers and all that. God, I want, I want, I need, I need, I need. I, mm -mm. That's not praying in the spirit. Okay. Come on. What is God showing you? What is God revealing to you? What is the Lord really showing you about yourself? Come on. Hallelujah. Because before we can ask for anything, we got to come humbly before God, right? Let's continue to read here. And watching thereunto with perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Come on. So not only do we pray for ourselves, but we pray for everybody. <laughs> Come on here. Not only do we, we pray for ourselves and ask God to bless our house and bless our family, we intercede for the entire body of Christ. All the saints. The Bible says all the saints. Come on here. Hallelujah. So we don't even pray selfish prayers. Come on. Me, myself, and I. We don't do that. Amen. I'm trying to help somebody in the Holy Ghost. I don't know who needs this teaching tonight. And remember, we always pray and intercede for other people. Because what you do for somebody else, God in turn will do for you. Amen. Come on, somebody. So God is reminding us tonight. He's saying, listen, I need you to continue to press. He said, I need you to continue to keep on going. God is reminding us tonight, hallelujah, that we got to come out from among them and be ye separated. Whatever you got to do to separate yourself from sin, anything connected to sin, you got to do it. God will help you and God will keep you. The Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. A transgressor is one who continues to sin. See, the way of the transgressor is hard, but Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The saved life is the best life that you could ever live. Come on. Hallelujah. Being saved, listen, it's beautiful when you experience God in his fullness. It's beautiful when you get to a place of obedience in God. Hallelujah. Not just for the blessings, but to experience him. Because that's what God wants for each and every one of his children. He wants you to experience him. Hallelujah. Which means he wants relationship. Glory to God. We've been teaching that here in our ministry. God wants relationship. So we are meditating upon Psalm 51 in our time with the Lord here in our ministry and I encourage you all to do the same. Psalm 51 is a psalm of repentance. Come on. Even if you have not willfully, deliberately sinned, get it in your spirit that it's possible. Come on here. If pride is taken over, that's sin. It's so many sins that we don't even really acknowledge. In other words, gluttony is a sin. Come on here. Overeating, that's gluttony. That's a sin. Come on, God, he, he, he doesn't like that. Come on here. So many sins that we don't address on a daily basis. Come on. Hallelujah. Being a busybody. God said, don't be a busybody. Don't be all over the place. Come on. So these are sins that, you know, that, that you may do and, and not even realize. 
So we have to meditate upon Psalm 51. Amen. And keep a repentive heart. Keep a repentive spirit. Hallelujah. Before the Lord. And asking God to cleanse us. Ask God to wash us. We got to ask God to purge us with his soap. That we might be what? Clean. David says in Psalm 51, he says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Mm -hmm. According to thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. He says, Wash me thoroughly. Is that anybody's prayer? Hallelujah. Is that anybody's prayer? Wash me thoroughly, God. Wash me thoroughly of my iniquity. He acknowledges his sin. Come on. In order for God to forgive us, we have to acknowledge that we have sinned against him and him alone. Come on. Verse three, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. David is saying, I got to be right before you, God. He said, even when I judge sin, I got to be right. He said, even when I speak, I got to be right. Come on, this is so good, right? Verse five, he says, behold, I was shaped in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Verse six, behold, thou desires truth. Come on, truth in the inward part. Truth in your spirit, man. Come on, anybody desire truth? You know, the Bible said the truth shall make you free. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. The truth shall make us free. Come on. When you, when you, when you digest the truth and you take truth into your spirit, man. Ah, oh, this is good tonight. Mm. Hallelujah. And truth is the word of God. When you let the word get inside of you, it's going to change you. It's going to change you. But David says, I desire truth. Not a lie. <laughs> Come on here. See, the devil spews lies. The enemy would tell you a whole bunch of lies. He's the father of lies. Right? Come on. So that's the opposite of truth. Right? He says, I desire truth in the inward part. And in the hidden part, thou shall make me to know wisdom. Come on. When you desire truth, you now become wise. Come on. When you desire the truth of God, you desire his word. You have now what is called the spirit of wisdom. It will rest upon you. You can make better decisions. Come on. When you have wisdom, wisdom means to be wise. Come on. People who are wise, they're not hasteful. They don't, you know, they're not in their flesh. Come on here. When you are a wise person, the wisdom that you carry, you can now release it upon someone else. Right? Come on. Somebody shout, Lord, help me to be wise. David goes on to say, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. He says, wash me mm, and I shall be whiter than snow. He says, make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones which thou has broken may rejoice. Verse nine, he says, hide thy face from my sin mm, and blot out all my iniquities. Verse 10 is our key verse here in our ministry. Created me, me, not nobody else. <laughs> Created me. Yeah, do the work in me, God. Created me a clean heart. Mm. My God. Mm. Everybody on the broadcast tonight, just put your hand over your heart. Hallelujah. Just put your hand over your heart. As I'm reading Psalm 51 and 10. Created me a clean heart. Oh God. Mm. And renew a right spirit within me. That's right. It's personal. It's personal. Glory to God. He goes on to say, cast me not from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12, he says, restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with a free spirit. 
Mm. He says, then will I teach transgressors. Come on. Then will I teach those who are sinners thy ways. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Come on, catch this revelation real quick. David is praying and he's repenting. He's giving everything over to God so that God can use him to deliver and bring others out. Mm. My God, my God. So powerful. That that is so powerful, you know. And I really believe that when we get to the place where we realize it's God who is able to deliver. It is God who is able to heal. It is God who is able to set you free. Then you can keep on pressing. You can keep on going. Because God says you will make it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You will make it. That's right, Sister Lisa. Heart transformation. I think this is the second year we've been talking about that. Amen. And how God wants to do supernatural spiritual surgery on your heart. And that's surgery without an incision. That's that's where, listen, we, we don't know your heart's been changed until you open your mouth. In, in other words, come on here. God can, he can do spiritual surgery on your heart without an incision. Come on here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, higher did he I said, God is able. Mm. Somebody just lift your hands right here because there's a mighty release of healing for the heart tonight. Glory to God. Just lift your hands right here. Come on. You got to set your device up. Listen, lift your hands right here and say, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. For number one, searching my heart. Hallelujah. And whatever you find in my heart, God. I need you to remove it. I need you to cleanse my heart, Father. I need you to purify my heart. Hallelujah. Make me whole again. Somebody needs to pray that tonight. Make me whole again. Hallelujah. No longer shall you go to God fragmented in pieces. Oh, higher Who am I praying for and talking to tonight? No longer shall you go to God broken and in pieces. Ask him to heal you. Hallelujah. God, mend the broken heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ask God to make you whole, make you over again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in order for God to make you over and to make you whole, it's going to require you giving up some things. As the Apostle Paul says in the book of Philippians, forgetting those things which are behind. Hallelujah. And reaching forth. <laughs> To the things that are before. He says, I press towards the mark. Mm. Glory to God. He says, I press towards the mark. He said, I'm reaching to the thing that's before me. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, I, I reach forth to the thing that is in front of me. I can see it now. Hey, hey. How you did your shot? Somebody showed. I can see it now. Hallelujah. But I'm closing the door to my past. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody show I'm closing the door to my past. It's over now. Hey, hey. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. I felt the release in the spirit for many of you. Hallelujah. God says it's over now. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As we're pressing on tonight, hallelujah. I want to just read in your hearing Matthew 6 and 33. Glory to God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The Bible says all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. But seek ye first. Glory to God. Because as we're pressing, we got to keep God first. Amen. Hallelujah. As we're reaching, we got to keep God first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we're moving forward, as we're going forward in the things of God, we must keep God first. Amen. Put God first in your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. And all these things, thank you, Minister Tanya, all these things shall be added unto you. <laughs> Somebody shout, Lord, I'm ready to be added to now. 
<laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of you listen. Let, let me give you this revelation. This last. Let me just give you this last key point that God gave me years ago. In order for God to add to us, we have to first be made whole. God cannot add to us, and we're broken. Right? Because if you add a whole number to a broken number, you're going to get a fraction. Hmm. But when you add two whole numbers together, you get another whole number, right? Come on. And so God is saying, even in that, allow him to make you whole first before you ask him to add to you. Oh, my God, my God. When I tell you all, God gave me that revelation. It, it did something for me, Sister Linda. Hallelujah. It did something for me. So we need to be whole first before God can add to us. <laughs> Ah, that's some good revelation right there. He gave me that about seven years ago. Glory to God. And it, it, it did something for me. Hallelujah. It allowed me to stay in a place of wholeness. Because anytime God wants to add to us, we can't be broken and fragmented. Amen. So ask God to make you whole again. Ask God to heal your heart. He's doing it even now. Glory to God. God bless each and every one of you on tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The information is there for those who desire to sow into our ministry. Listen, I don't ever want to leave a broadcast or a ministry call without giving you the opportunity to sow. Why? Because everything starts with the seed, people of God. Hallelujah. Everything starts with the seed. Glory to God. And I want to just encourage the sowers on tonight. If you're going to sow into our ministry, Name your seed, I'm pressing forward. Hallelujah. Name your seed, I'm pressing forward. And I just hear the number eight, which represents new beginnings. Thank you, Jesus. I hear you, God. So whatever your seed amount is tonight, make sure there's an eight in your seed. All right. Make sure there's a number eight in your seed. 18, 28, 38, 48, 88, 108. Whatever your seed is tonight, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Prophet Antonio healing. That's right. God is doing it. Hallelujah. God is doing it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you all. Amen. Those of you that are going to go to the ministry cash app. It is prophetic impact 555. Um, PayPal.me slash prophetic impact. www.propheticimpact1000.com. Glory to God. Name your seed. I'm pressing forward. Hallelujah. Let me just give you all this last um, key point that God is just releasing into my spirit to give to you. It's just like the 10 leopards. Mm. You know, the Bible says that only one came back to tell Jesus, thank you. But the revelation in that scripture, Jesus healed all 10 leopards, right? And it was only one that came back to thank him. But what Jesus spoke to that leopard, he said, listen, as you go your way, you shall be healed. It's so important that in a place of needing to be healed, you don't stay stuck. That's the enemy's playground when you're in a place of depression, oppression, suicidal thoughts. You want to give up. If you stay in one place, that's the enemy's playground. And he can pounce on you. He can speak to you. He can try to manipulate you. You understand? Glory to God. Thank you for sowing your seed on tonight, woman of God. There's so many things the enemy can do to you because you're in a stuck place. Right? But what did I say in the beginning? And the enemy cannot hit a moving, he cannot hit a moving target. Come on, that doesn't mean that you're here, there, and everywhere, but don't stay stuck. All right, keep on pressing like the apostle Paul said. Glory to God. Forget what's behind you. What's behind you is behind you for a reason. It's time to press now. Glory to God. It's time to keep on going. Hallelujah. God is strengthening you through this word on tonight to keep on going. Hallelujah. I want to see you run on to see what the end is going to be. I want to see many of you continuing to walk. Hallelujah. I want to see many of you, glory to God, stretching out on your faith and going further in the things of God. Hallelujah. That is my prayer tonight. 
Glory to God, that you don't be stuck. Hallelujah. And allowing the enemy to make you feel defeated because you have the victory. Amen. And the victory is in Christ Jesus. We're going to conclude on our prayer line call tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Be like that one leopard that Jesus healed. Glory to God. And listen, tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. Tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. As God is healing you, as God has healed you, some of you were healed even on the broadcast through the word I hear God saying and the anointing that was released today. Hallelujah. From heaven, from God, he has healed many of you tonight. He has touched your mind. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says that, amen, um, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, now by the mercies of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God had to give it back to me. I beseech you, therefore, now by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Sometimes you got to lay hands on yourself. Lord, touch my mind. Hallelujah. God, touch my, touch my mind. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do a work in my thoughts. <laughs> Come on here. Hallelujah. Let my thoughts be lined up with your word and your will for my life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray over every seed that has been sown on tonight. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. Those of you that are preparing to sow, make sure that your seed has an eight in it on tonight. Amen. New beginnings, new beginnings, new beginnings. Hallelujah. Some of you are going to wake up in the morning and feel refreshed. You're going to feel new in your spirit, man. Mm -hmm. And even some of you are going to be able to get back into your word. Who am I talking to? There are a few of you that have not, you haven't even been able to read your word lately because your mind has been all over the place. You're going to get back to the place where now you can read God's word. You can study, you can meditate again. <laughs> Glory to God. You're going to be able to study and meditate upon the word of God again. That's your new beginning. God's giving you a new beginning, even a new birthing. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying many of you are going to be a new, is going to be a rebirthing. Hallelujah. What God has already put in you, the seed that he has put in you, there's going to be a rebirthing. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying in your new beginnings. Amen. So make sure that you get your seed in the ground. Don't miss this opportunity. Amen. To God be the glory. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you once again for joining Prophetic Impact Prayer and Word Ministry. Pastor Prophetess Carmen Haywood signing off. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you. It's been an awesome time in the presence of the Lord. Jump on our prayer line, 712-775-7031. The SS code is 222-953-820-POUND. Once again, thank you, Sister Divinity. God bless you tonight. Amen. 712-775-7031. The SS code 222-953-820-POUND. God bless each and every one of you tonight. Jump on the line with us. We're going to conclude with our ministry's announcements. And if you were blessed tonight and you have something you want to say, the line is going to be open for you. All right. God bless you all tonight. Have an awesome evening and hold on to this word. And before you exit, share, click that share button. All right. Glory to God. Blessings to you all. Have an awesome night. Shalom.